Although members of the domains Bacteria and Archaea have many important differences, they're united by their general cell type. Unlike members of the domain Eukarya, Bacteria and Archaea are prokaryotes and therefore single-celled and lacking a nucleus. Though some prokaryotes live together in colonies or attached in a group, they do not share the same level of connection and coordination as multicellular organisms. Prokaryotes carry the genes on a single circular chromosome, unprotected in the gel-like cytoplasm filling the interior of the cell. They may also carry some genetic material in plasmids. A plasmid is a small circular piece of bacterial DNA that replicates on its own and can be transferred between cells. Prokaryotic cells divide and therefore reproduce by binary fission. Prokaryotes as a group have diverse mechanisms for obtaining energy and carbon. Prokaryotes can be classified as either autotrophs, usually meaning they rely on carbon dioxide as a source of carbon, or heterotrophs, meaning they rely on organic compounds as a source of carbon. The organisms can then be further subdivided depending on how they obtain their energy. So chemotrophs obtain their energy through chemical reactions with certain organic or inorganic compounds, whereas phototrophs are able to obtain their energy from the sun. The domain bacteria can be further classified into the kingdom Eubacteria, the most diverse of all the known kingdoms of life. The members of this kingdom are so diverse that humans and potatoes are more closely related than many bacterial species are to each other. In addition to bacteria being metabolically diverse as a group, some individual bacteria are able to change metabolic strategies based on the environment. For example, some bacteria are able to use oxygen when it is present and switch to fermentation when oxygen is absent. Although a relatively small proportion of disease-causing bacteria receives the most public attention, many bacteria perform critical ecological functions and can be found in every environment on Earth. Arguably the most important bacterial contribution to life on Earth was the transformation of the atmosphere by ancient photosynthetic cyanobacteria that release oxygen into the atmosphere. This made life possible for those organisms that require oxygen. However, even today, bacteria provide important ecological services. For example, some bacteria called nitrogen-fixing bacteria can convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia and other nitrogen-containing compounds, which can then be used by plants and subsequently animals to supply their nitrogen needs. In this way, bacterial species are responsible for modifying atmospheric nitrogen to a form that eukaryotic organisms can use. Bacteria also play a role as decomposers, as some have the ability to break down waste materials to release carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and other elements back into the ecosystem. Without the decomposing actions of bacteria and other organisms such as fungi, the supply of chemical elements in the environment would diminish and the continuity of life would cease. Finally, a growing body of evidence has shown the importance of the microbiome, the collection of organisms, including bacteria, living in the human digestive tract. The microbiome is believed to play a role in the development of obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and diseases of the digestive system. As previously discussed, archaea share some characteristics with the domain bacteria, but genetic and other evidence indicates that archaea diverged from bacteria a very long time ago. Archaea are currently thought to be more closely related to eukaryotes than to bacteria, their fellow prokaryotes. Like bacteria, archaea cells lack a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. They also have a single circular chromosome. However, archaea cell walls do not have peptidoglycan, while bacterial cells do. Archaea also share some typically eukaryotic traits, mainly related to DNA. Like eukaryotes, some archaea have histones, proteins used to package DNA into chromosomes. Archaea also have introns, regions of non-coding DNA, in some of their genes. This is a trait found in the domain eukarya, but not in the domain bacteria. 
RKRNA polymerases, enzymes used to make mRNA, are also more similar to those of Eukarya than to those of domain bacteria. Archaea also have some unique traits that are not shared by any other domain. For example, many have branched lipids in their cell membranes, while organisms of other domains have unbranched lipids in their cell membranes. This trait is thought to help stabilize membranes at high temperatures, as this trait is more common in heat-loving archaea. The members of archaea gained a reputation for being extremophiles. These are organisms that thrive in extreme conditions, such as extreme salinity, chemical concentration, or temperature. This is partially because the first identified archaea were found under conditions that would not support most other life. For example, some archaea live in the very salty Great Salt Lake in Utah, and others live in hot springs that can reach temperatures above 100 degrees centigrade. However, it's important to note that not all archaea live in such extreme conditions. For example, some are found in swamps and oceans, and some even reside in your gut.